holidays nale ad namma gt holidays da south india's number one travel brand embrace the new era of learning 5d visit india's first underwater tunnel aquarium at bgp marine kingdom chennai in fact there was actually for a long period i was like do we do we even cut a trailer <laughs> like do we just release the film that was initially my idea hello hemant rukmini rakshit and i'm not i'm naming you in the order of how you're sitting so nobody gets importance but i just wanted to say i really really loved saide and i told him and i haven't told you but i'm telling you now and i haven't told you and i'm meeting you for the first time so good to meet you and you know there are different types of like uh love stories right there are some love stories that are uh, what i'd like to call happy love stories which which kind of leave the audience with who like wow you know i'm feeling very happy about love and mm. jubilant about all that but then there are these what i like to call not sad necessarily but complicated love stories you are kind of leaving the audience with with the mixed mood even if everybody is not experienced love they've kind of know about the concept of it and different people have had different you know shades of it and I think a movie like this is amazing in that it kind of gives you a shade and the best news I heard was that Saide had done well because in this time and place okay. you don't know like what you only think all those big uh, blockbuster type movies are going to do well so when you hear that this movie is done well it's kind of a thing so my first question to you is you know everybody has a back story right it's like uh, uh, you know because you start the movie with with Manu and your character being in love so there's no real uh, and but that's one of the things that 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 I love most about the movies that there is no introduction you're just plunged into their world right away right what is the back story or is it something that's coming up inside b no no it's i don't think uh, it's well, not coming up inside did you b. tell them what the back story was yeah 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 okay yeah. so we did a uh, from the beginning it was always a it was always the plan to start the story from the middle right so i because i wanted to sort of you know sink my teeth right into the plot into yeah, yeah, yeah. the into the instead story. of wasting time introducing yeah, yeah, them yeah yeah, yeah yeah we did a workshop for their sort of you know for them to get familiar with each other for them to understand the characters and to so think about couples is that i have noticed that you, you, one look you can tell somebody is in love right you know in a public place yeah. especially uh, so i wanted that kind of energy between two actors so for that to happen you need to do a lot of you know ground work and like exchange of information and get comfortable uh, with each other so we did a lot of workshops so we built like a memory bank of what manu and priya are like like where did they fight first you know what did they fight over where do they usually go uh, you know to eat because the thing about couples in love is that they are very habitual in yeah. nature there's a sense of repetition in terms of everything that they do right they'll eventually get bored and then they'll change and all that but there is that whole cycle which i find very which i find very beautiful and often these are the things that are not not that are not celebrated yeah, yeah. you know uh, so i wanted to celebrate those things so we built a lot of memories for the two characters and the back story is became very integral in that sense What is the back story? <laughs> That's what I'm asking you. You're telling they me everything else. They're very coy about it. Yeah, they, they met. They meet in. Uh, he goes. Uh, so our mother runs a, a bonda shop. Like she makes these fries and all yeah, that. Yeah. So he sees her at one of those, <laughs> at that store, and that's how they. sort of you know th- that's how our relationship develops so is it like love at first sight or no he's just he sees a pretty girl there's no detail to the, it ha ah, there the detail is that he, there is a bad batch of coat bales which he buys she knows it's a bad batch she's about to throw it out but he buys it okay. he has an upset upset stomach <laughs> right. suffers quite a bit but still shows up the next day just because he the girl who gave it to him was like very sweet so that's how you know the the relationship sort there, of there was a time and he wanted to shoot it yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then we uh, i mean uh, this is when he once we finished side a uh, shoot and he decided that you know uh, this is going to be one film uh, it's not going to be like you know side side b is going to be different film this is going to be one film and then uh, he had few plans of you know let's sh- let's shoot the uh, origin story yeah. the origin it's story cu- sweet meet cute no it's lovely <laughs> yeah yeah and actually It's always nice to know what happened, you know. It's just like even though now you, of course, 
now you concretized it <laughs> so now i'm my imagination is lost because i imagine all sides of things no but that is that is primary one of the reasons why i i refrain yeah, from yeah. mentioning it because that there is a certain beauty in the fact that it, we don't Not know you don't yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because you meeting them he knows her he he's familiar with her mother she mothers yeah, accepted yeah, yeah. him so they're already like a family yeah, you know yeah. and that's beautiful to kind of get into that that part of their journey it's like it's almost like getting into a train and meeting a couple right, like right, rather right, than yeah, uh, yeah. rather than Correct. like you know seeing a thing and another thing that really really i loved about side a is that usually love stories and of course there are exceptions but usually love stories they tend to give highlight moments you know which is like the cute moments so that the audience finds the couple cute and and begins to love the couple as much as the couple loves each other here again that's that's very tamped down i'm i think i'm doing a damn good job of unselling your story <laughs> it's like don't expect an origin story don't expect cute moments it's like no no but that's not my intention at all but but i'm just saying that was so wonderful because you know there's a certain routineness in life you know once once the high points get set so they've already fallen in love they've already had their big fights they this thing there's something so now they they reached a state where the, the smoothness is there until whatever happens to him happens or like that kind of thing and that state of smoothness is so beautiful because you just have these little little moments that capture that steady flow of their life until that big storm arrives when you spoke about this story with your director gundu uh, your core co-writer gundu shetty what was it like like did you say till that big high moment arrives we're not going to do anything like that is that is that how you no, planned it was it? not it was not like a very let's not you know let's not do this or let's do only this type of a thing we uh, we sort of let the natural course of the story play out like we we wrote only what came natural right like whenever uh, we never looked at the scene from a vantage point of okay usually love stories need this we never looked at it that right. way we just went with the flow of you know okay the characters are are in this mood they are in this you know stage in their life where they are about to settle down so for them it is not the they have already met they have already fallen in love all that you know that amazing mm. you know that the first time all yeah, that is already yeah, yeah, done yeah. so now what is the nice thing is when he says bye to her there will be a moment between them which is what we'll have to capture yeah so those are the things that we'll gravitate towards right is what the script sort of started guiding us you know uh, like the premise itself sometimes when you're writing it will strongly dictate where you want yeah, to go yeah yeah or the characters or the character yeah. so there i think the only difference is that the filmmaker should surrender and uh, if the filmmaker surrenders then you can take the organic route right if you don't surrender then if you look at it from a perspective of a, okay the film needs these commercial elements then you will start loading it with things probably that are not necessary for the script right so right. we didn't do that process right i didn't have that pressure from from a from a producer perspective or from a film perspective we just wanted to make an intimate intimate story right so the more intimate we got the more exciting it became right no and that intimacy is also not something that's highlighted because that scene where he says bye to her in the bus it's like they've said many byes mm -hmm. like this is just one of those many byes so it's not a highlight by it's not like oh i'm going to miss you not all that's not happening it's like you know it's just, it's just like oh i know you're going to be back so let's just you know i'm going on a trip and that that kind of a thing i'm saying that was Correct. captured very beautifully in this film as a producer i'm sure you had lots of talks with him about the movie and you as well as as an actor when when you were presented this kind of a love story what was your reaction did you feel that maybe this needs a little more or you know how how did you guys react to it <laughs> i mean for for me as uh, this was my second film uh straight after covid of no employment for 3 years I reached out for this project. Right. So I knew that I wanted to work with this team. I knew I wanted to do a love story. I was over the moon when I heard the story because I believed that I mean I'd seen all of Heyman's work before this right. and I knew the way that he writes nuanced female characters. So I I loved the kind of agency Priya has in this film and I I loved the fact that this film required workshops and that it required that kind of um, emotional intimacy. the kind, the amount of work it required thrilled me i think i remember in my first 
meeting with him. I felt like an idiot after I left. But he said, so so what do you expect from your career? What, what do you want? And I said, I'd really love to be involved in something that allows me to flex, <laughs> like in my acting. And then I left and I was like, oh my God, why did I say that? <laughs> this is before the audition, this is before everything. So when I heard the story, I, I was thrilled. And I, I had no idea about would this need something or not. I was just like, I'm going to work with him. I'm going to work with him. That's all. That's, that's all I need. <laughs> what about as a producer, Rakshat? It's like, because the reason I ask is also, we have seen a slow shift in the audience and what they take and don't take. And especially with the Kannada industry, you guys defined a new era of blockbuster with, with KGF and all that kind of stuff. So to kind of, you know, put this story out right there, was there any kind of... No, for me, uh, see, for me, these kind of films, you know, I like these kind of films more than the commercial mass uh, uh, kind of a film. And I uh, trust him as a filmmaker so much uh, that at one point, I know it's him and those doing the film. So just let's go, <laughs> let's do it, uh, kind. Uh, but at the same time, see, we were in a very, we were playing in a very safe zone. It's not that, you know, we, we, we were taking risk in terms of uh, budget or, right, right. or whatever. We knew... This kind of budget will recover for sure. Especially, yeah. you know, initially when we started, it was one film. So even when it was one film, I, I knew that the recovery is not a pro uh, right, problem. Right. Even though if you, you know, don't make a big profit, it, it, that, that's fine. As long as I, I want to be a part of, you know, a good film. And probably, uh, you know, after this film, the kind of films which I have in, in, in lineup, which I'm going to direct myself, probably I won't get to be a part of this kind of uh, a film, especially a Heyman Rao's uh, film. And I won't get to play uh, such an intense uh, character. So for me, it was a it was a nice thing to have it on on my profile, right? As right. an actor, right? No, one of the things about your character is which I, which I really loved is the immense faith in. I think the word for it is destiny. Mm -hmm. That someday he will come out, and till then, all I have to do is just, you sure. know, like, like, <laughs> like, you know, be there, like, like, kind of a thing. It's not really an arc, you know. It's more mm -hmm. like, like, a, a steady, like, like again, another steady state for you to kind of be there for him, and at the same time, kind of a thing. How how did you see that as a woman? How did you process that? Did you say? Would she do that? Would she not do that? Did you have arguments like that with him uh, about uh, the character? Like, I mean, would, would would a woman do that? Wouldn't she have like, because the thing is, there is also that simmering anger in you that he did something without mm. even asking you what it was about and basically for your future. So basically, mm. you should have been consulted. Did you guys just like talk a lot about all this stuff? Like, like, would this happen? Would that happen? Or did you just hand it over and they were like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Let's shoot right away. <laughs> no, 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 no. As in, they were extremely intelligent actors. So there will be a lot of questions, which I, which I really like, because that means they are also equally invested. Right. So, and sometimes through their questions, I will see the scene in a slightly different perspective. And it all, it is always helpful to have that every step of the way, because you don't, it's very easy to sort of, uh, you know, get swayed away by what you have written thinking that it is beautiful. Right. So it's, these are all like security checks, you know, like where he'll ask a question, she'll ask a question. So those things happen. But the, with, with this particular character, uh, there was that thing of, you know, what do we do with her anger? Because mm. he went away, you know, yeah. for yeah. her. So there were questions. I think we uh, sort of, whenever I could give perspective, I have. Uh, but there is always that sense of allowing the actor to interpret that emotion in their own way right without boxing it into one okay this is exactly what it is i don't want to tell exactly what it is i want to put a box and say in this you do whatever you want right you know so i i think that liberty should be given to the actors for them to uh, to create that character like for example i wanted manu to be vulnerable right and 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 just i wanted to say that rakshit i've never seen you this vulnerable on screen before so it was just so Heartbreaking to see you in this film. Even though Charlie, I cried buckets because I'm a dog person and I just could not take that movie. It was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> but this was seriously seeing you at your most vulnerable and I really, really, that performance totally worked for me. Thank so, you, thank you. Yours as well. But, you know, that just <laughs> because you said no, vulnerable. No, no, it, yeah, it, it yeah, is. Can you so, imagine acting across from that? Oh yeah, my God. Yeah, so. <laughs> so it was very nice to just give that 
I didn't want to define that vulnerability, for example. So he sort of found that. Right. And I had to just make sure that we are in that zone. Right. You know, so it, it became like that. Right. You know, this one weird interview because I'm trying to tell people that if you haven't seen Side A, then go watch it because it's a great film. But I also don't, you know, want them to, uh, the, those who've seen the movie, I want them to be able to relate to certain yeah, yeah. So I'm like trying to create a balance between that and of course, tell them to watch Side B. You know, one of the ways you, you kind of show the anger is towards the person who made him do the thing that he did, you know, in a car scene, for instance. Uh, or towards your mother. Some of these improvised a little, why not do this, why not do that? Or was everything pretty much in the in the script? Most of the things were in the script. Were in the script, okay. I, I don't recall any of those bigger yeah. scenes being improvised. Also, uh, perhaps given the kind of actor that I am and also the phase in my life, in my career that I've done this film, I wasn't too comfortable with improvising. Right. So, I, I don't, uh, I don't know if I have it yet. <laughs> Two years are on to the confidence to improvise a larger movement like that. I take my improvisations within the uh, boundaries set for me by the way the frame is composed and what I've been given as my direction and my action. So in terms of my expression or in terms of my dynamic with my co-actor, I I bring whatever I can in terms of improvisation in that phase. Right. I don't have the faith yet that I won't absolutely mess up the entire uh, thing that we've got going. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Because she used the word mess up. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of like improvising, you you guys have this long term relationship. Maybe not the best word to use in this situation. <laughs> no, no, it is relationship. It, yeah. is, it is. It Believe is. me, I'm a kebab haddi. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you should maybe change places now. <laughs> no, at this point, I've embedded myself in this relationship. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so, how was the like like you know the process of surrendering yourself to this kind of character as opposed to a Godi Bana, which is I'm not saying it's it's more generic, but there is a little more of an of an obviousness to that character yeah. simply because you know that the dad is like this, the son is like that, and and dad's son problems are like that. As opposed to this movie, where there's a very specific decision that you make that kind of sets the dominoes rolling, so to speak. So, like, do you feel that? He's become better at evolving. Getting better? I'm not sure because he's I, I, I believe he's the same. Yeah, um, as a as a human, he's, he's the same. So he understands relationship. Uh, I mean, he understood relationship uh, even even during uh, you know Godi Barna as much as he understands it now. His craft, uh, the filmmaking, the the way he's he's shot the film that has definitely changed. Also during Godi Barna, probably he had a lot of constraints that you know he had to finish up finish the film in, in a certain budget and even though we were asking him that you know no we, we can extend the budget a little bit he was not ready uh, to do that you know he didn't want to take that uh, risk then so now i think he, he was a little more confident uh, that you no know, I, I can we have a, we can have a bigger budget and you know we i can ex uh, shoot the film they exactly the way i want i don't have to compromise anywhere right. things like that but in terms of me surrendering i think see uh, i've done what 11 12 films and mo most of the characters are written by myself. Uh, you know, only I think Godi Varna uh, was written by him. Charlie uh, was written by uh, Kiran Raj, and now uh, Sapta Sagara. The idea of surrendering has always been the same because when I have not written the character, I do not know the character as much as the one who has written it. Right. Uh, so the idea of surrendering is definitely the same. The process of surrendering has changed for sure. That is because uh, the changes which has happened inside me probably. During uh, Godi Bana Sadhana I mean, as Hemant explains every time, probably I used to take a lot of time to understand what he's telling me and this is the same we are doing and this is the emotion. I used to understand it right then because probably the way he uh, took us along, both the actors, right from the workshop, for the first day of shoot when we were, we started with, you know, uh, shooting at a very crumpled uh, space. So we, we got to know that, oh, one who lives in this kind of uh, society. Although we, we knew it, we got an experience uh, of that. And uh, before we did that, we did a workshop where we had to know each other as Rakshit and Rukmini, but as well as Manu and uh, Priya. So during the first day of shoot, we were already, uh, you know, very familiar with the, with the character. And from then on, he started building that, uh, the way we shot the film itself was like that. You know, we as we shot each and uh, uh, every scene, and we we shot in a sequence, almost in a sequ sequence, not exactly in a sequence, but almost in a, in, in a sequence, so that by the time we I entered the jail, I al already suffered the idea of you know oh, I'm going away from 
uh, Priya. Uh, so I think it's 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 him who took us along, uh, holding our hands. Now we just heard the meet cute story of Manu and Priya. What's the meet cute story of you and Hemant? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> when when did it happen? So I was right. You want to know, right? <laughs> so, I think I, I no, I haven't heard this story. So no, I was I, I was I, I was uh, translating Udidoru Kannadante from English to uh, Kannada. Okay. And uh, it was a very uh, meaning you were subtitling it or something. No. Ah. I was in the scripting stage even before oh, Udidoru script, Kannadante. Okay, okay, right, right. So I'd made uh, uh, so I acted in a film called Simple on Loshuri, which had become a, ah, yeah, a, I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, I was translating uh, Udidoru Kannadante. It was uh, in Wilson Garden where it was a, I think what, 600 square feet uh, room. Smaller. It was, uh, <laughs> I think 400 square feet room. It was Rishabh's uh, mm. office. He was into construction then. So it was his construction office where he didn't have any work. So uh, <laughs> so me and Rishabh, we, uh, we sat there and uh, so he was translating the, the uh, Kundapur Kannada because he comes from Kundapur. Right. I was translating the rest of the uh, dialogues and uh, he had come to uh, meet me. Um, he had a script I, called Lao Churmuri. I had come to pitch a, so his film had, uh, no, it, it film, his film hadn't released yet. So it was still. That uh, simple, like, it had not released. Had not released. Yet. Okay. So, but I knew it was going to become a hit. Okay. Because there was a lot of hype around the Buzz film. Buzz and all that. Yeah. So I was like, if I approach him after it becomes a hit, then, <laughs> then I, you know, it will feel, it will feel kind of, you know, he's coming only because, uh, you know, because the film has become a hit. So I had, I had reached out to him. Uh, somehow got gotten his number. I had reached out to him before the film released, saying that I want to meet you. I have a script, so I think I met him after the film released. Be by then, the film had become a hit. But my thing was, I had reached out before, <laughs> so I am not I am not a glory hunter, you know, that sort of a thing. So I met him, and uh, as I am narrating the story, Rishabh is like he said, is sitting in the background, and he's like. You know, just staring me down. Like I'm like, who is this bodyguard in the background? Like, what is he doing? He's so, like, after Uli I'm going to direct. Yeah, him. so <laughs> he's already like planned planned his uh, directorial with him. So he's looking at me as as uh, you know as somebody who's trying to take take away his uh, his assets, so to speak. So I uh, I narrated the whole script and but he was very sure that he's not he's not going to do any films. He was very clear that he's going to do Uli Kandante. So. Uh, he, I think, uh, sort of in the way I presented the story, saw that I am a, or at least I'm, I'm, I know what I'm talking about right. at least. So I think that sort of just stayed and we met again after. You kept one. in touch and yeah. And then I was doing a film with Rishabh. That's when he uh, uh, yeah. came back again and uh, we were shooting in Karkala, I think. Yeah, so Ricky. Ricky. Mm -hmm. ah, we were shooting Ricky. Uh, so then he came with uh, Godi Bana So when he came up with, with the idea, I, I knew this is going to be a good film and it's, it's Heyman who's directing it. Uh, but then I was, was still not sure if I should do it. And then he came up with a one, one small teaser, uh, like a wanted teaser. Uh, and the teaser was so good that I, I decided I want to be a part of this. Teaser for Godivana. For yeah. Godivana. Okay. Uh, so that was, he released it online. And I saw that and I immediately called him and told that I'm good, do, doing this film. No, he had in, initially he had said he can't be part of Godivana because his, his dates were a major ah. issue. So then I, then I was like, okay. <laughs> I really wanted to work with him because I really, you know, loved his performance on Ulidor Kandante and I'd seen the Simple Agun Love Story. So for an actor to jump from this to that, just showed, you know, that range that he is and, and um, that he is an, he's a very good actor. You know, I would, I'd be like, damn, I missed out. You know, I, that is the feeling that I had. But I was like, okay, you know, cinema is with or without you. So I was like, okay, that I was like, okay, I'll do it types. But I put out the teaser and then he called and said, uh, is, uh, is, have you cast anybody? I was like, no, no, let's talk, let's talk. <laughs> I was in fact on my way to meet an actor to tell him that he's got the part. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know this. this is <laughs> no, no, I, was, I was on my way to meet Arvind Ayer oh. to tell him that, yeah, okay, we are doing the film together. Then I called Arvind and I told him, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm meeting Rakshit. Then after Rakshit met him, I actually explained the whole thing to Arvind and told him, this is what it is and of, it makes better sense for me to go with Rakshit. So that's how it, that's wow. how it happened. What a brutal world. <laughs> <laughs> I worked with Arvind in Kirik party so yeah, yeah, immediately yeah. after uh, Godi mm, Bandha. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Coming back to side A, uh, I want, now each of you has, I don't want to use the word definition, but a concept of the word of love, right? What, what love is. I want each of you to pick a moment in the movie that to you, it's like, this is what love is, you know, 
I'll start with you. I want to keep it spoiler free, but there's a moment where uh, Manu and Priya meet. I love that you just immediately knew which moment. You I I know I've, I I because I've thought about this a lot, and my typical answer for this is um is that it's support. You know, it's it's two people leaning on each other. But the one moment to me that was so delightful to play and that typifies the relationship that Manu and Priya share is uh, this moment uh, where they're meeting after a long time and Priya has something very difficult to tell him. Right. I remember in the prep that I did for that scene, there was an idea that really helped me, which is that they're both two people dealing with something very, very heavy and difficult and they're both trying to grab it from each other. She's like, no, no, I, I'll hold this. Like, you just focus on your thing. Right. You stay safe. And then he takes it back from her and he's like, no, 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 you, you, you stay afloat. I, I've got this. I've got this. So that tug of war, um, even though Rakshis and I didn't have a discussion about it. So it's not like we spoke about it and then went into doing the scene. It's not like Hemant gave us that brief. This was something I went in with. And as, uh, as performers, like it's really exciting because Rakshis plays off of whatever you give him. And then I, I have the faith to sort of play off of what he gives me. So that moment for me is, is them in a nutshell. But they're both tr trying to be strong for each other. They're miserable at it, but <laughs> they're doing their absolute best. Right, right. Uh, for me, uh, this is the most beautiful uh, moment in the film uh, also, uh, where he writes a letter. Before the letter reaches her, he's going to meet her for the, la for the last time. Right. So he knows that he's going to meet for the last time. But uh, she, she has no idea about uh, it. Right. And uh, the way it plays in the film, uh, you know, uh, first you get to uh, listen to the letter, what he's written. And then this, you get to see the uh, get to see the scene also. The way it has been picturized, everything it's just beautiful. And that moment where you know he knows he's going to uh, you know sacrifice the most important uh, part of his life. Right. Uh, that's 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 the. So so for you, love is basically looking out for the other person more than yourself. Basically making sure that like it's protection. Yeah. Yeah. Like protecting the other person. Yeah, yeah. That's, Sac also that's sacrifice. I mean, keeping them them first right. before you think about yourself. Right, right, right. For me, actually, it's uh, every moment that they're not with each other. You can't see it like this. You have to see <laughs> one more. Uh, like, for example, any any uh, if you pick any uh, what I'm trying to say is if you pick any moment where they're not with each other, right? The fact that they they are surrendered to the idea of 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 their happiness and their entire self a sense of you know self mm -hmm. to another person there is a certain surrendering of yourself to another person that i feel is the is the best part about the film for me right. because he's constantly you know he's in prison for thinking that he's you know they're going to have a good life whatever hardship he's going through she's in her his thoughts and vice versa she's on the outside trying to get him out but she's doing all of that with him in mind. Right. So they're constantly, there is, for me, if, you, if that to encapsulate it, I would say there's a phone call between the two of them, which lasts literally for like 30 seconds. Right. After the first time, uh, you know, the meeting room thing, they sort of, the audience and the characters understand that the prison system is, is quite tricky in terms of how meeting rooms work also. Right. So they don't even get 20 seconds to spend with each other. So... But they get a phone call. In that phone call, there is like this wave of emotion that, you know, in that short period of time, they're able to communicate to each other. Right. That for me is like, you know, those are the moments for me, which which give me a lot of, you know, joy. Uh, right. While, while the, that for me is where the love is. Right, right. I'm going to tell you something which may sound a little vague and abstract, but for me, as a viewer, I felt a lot of love from the director. That's you. Because any other person, you know, the scene where they part, right? You could have staged that anywhere, right? Because that would have given you more scope for her to scream and yell or for him to, you know, to get more emotional or whatever. But the fact that it is in that kind of a place, it's it's like, like life is happening around them. And this intensely private moment is happening in the middle of this entire chaos. public chaos. I really like, I had tears in my eyes because not only was I responding to their that what is happening to these two characters, but also to the fact that a director trusts the audience so much that he doesn't have to amp up the scene any more than just let him walk away. 
from her mm. because that scene is talking so much that they don't have to talk that much you know for me that that love from the director is is so beautiful that trust from a director that that i just wanted to let you know that no, no, i <laughs> and, uh, i can't tell you how happy that is I, you know, how happy i feel to hear that uh, because when you write a film there are some some scenes that you are dying to direct right in my two earlier films there were a lot of scenes like that where i want to direct this i want to direct this for me this scene was one of those many scenes which i was like i want to i can't wait to shoot that scene right because i knew what i was trying to achieve but the fear was will i get it will i get it right but it somehow thankfully just happened right and why the sea i mean <laughs> uh did i mean you must there are so many things that you could have chosen of course there is a general thing that you know across the mountains across the seas there's that phrase for me i think it circles back circles back to my first experience of being in front of the sea i think it is something that happens to every human being the first time they go to the sea there is how old were you i was probably 7 or 6 when i when when we were driving from bangalore and we had come to chennai mm. uh and we had gone to my my parents took me to the beach and to see the water in its in its vastness yeah. is truly a overwhelming feeling because as as a human being you would never see something that you know that huge in front of you right and it's a very it's something that is deeply romantic i think we all come from water like see that's that's something that somebody from madras will never get because we you <laughs> always see always, the always yeah. see it yeah. yeah no but i think i am talking about even if you are in in madras the first time a kid goes to the sea it will be a very overwhelming feel that probably is when you are this you will not feel that what you felt because uh-huh. you are 6 or 7 i was probably like correct one, correct you know like correct. Know, so it it's so probably it's taken for granted yeah yeah, mm. yeah. possibly yeah. so but for me when i saw it it was like wow this is and you hear the sound and there is there's a very deeply romantic idea to it instantly that is lodged in your head so over the years it gets reinforced with you know music and movies and all of that and it just factors into your writing you right. know where what is your ideal home is a house by the sea you know <laughs> what is the ideal dream is is to live by the sea so right. I, i for me the idea was de- from there and it sort of translated to she coming from the sea right she uh, coming from the coast to somebody who is landlocked you know that sort of a thing yeah yeah was worked into the uh, script right and also the the sea brings with it a, that like what you said that concept of unknowability correct vastness yeah yeah all ties into love as well because yeah. there is that mystery about like like where it's all from yeah. you know that 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 all ties into the where the, the story infinity is. of it in, 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 yeah. in, in, yeah. in many ways and you know, i've known you for a while now i never knew i never took you for this deeply romantic a guy <laughs> you know this is like it wasn't a surprise to you as well or you always knew he is like that oh, yeah, in terms of uh, his art i know he's very he goes really deep when it comes to love i don't i'm <laughs> not seen <laughs> no i don't mean romantic as in that as yeah. a lot but very you know you feel things so oh, yeah, deeply yeah, right yeah, yeah. right I, so, i i am very intensely passionate <laughs> towards <laughs> everything <laughs> about everything yeah you just said oh yeah you've experienced that side no, of but i i i think i you mean, have to be i think um, i think sometimes your work is a self portrait right so if you if you look at himant's work the thing that always drew me to it was the relationships oh, and correct. the depth and the sensitivity with which relationships were uh, handled and right. portrayed and i think that anyone who is able to portray relationships with such sensitivity right must be a romantic had had always yeah. been yeah and i yeah i don't mean constantly thinking about love but one that is a person that is sensitive and observant and like and sees things yeah yeah, yeah. so Because i'm not quite surprised but i think one of the thing that really springs from side is that i keep talking about your, your co-writer but but both you guys the way you brought out this uh, intensity in their relationship without there being many hugely intense moments there are in- intense moments but there's but between that there are very very simple moments like them going into a house hmm. and like just sitting down and settling in and looking around or them looking at a bigger house and talking about that or whatever it is you know it's like you just it's like in a way 
we are also in in their wake you know we are we're kind of following them and and in that you know i really have to appreciate parama pictures for doing what you're doing in that this time because it's like it's it's very easy for many people to say i'm a brand name now i'm a star you know like i'm i'm going to you know do stuff that's going to make me a bigger star or a bigger brand name but for you to kind of put your money where your mouth is it's it's like you know everybody talks about wanting to make better pictures but then there's always a but there's always like you know i want to do this but you know the audience is different or something like that but to kind of actually do this kind of picture i think that that's something so i just wanted to put that out there <laughs> so you met abhinesh manarana but even that there's a very quirky vibe about it you know there's it's not a regular Comes, like a yeah. mass commercial something 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 there's some there's a genuine voice a gen some individuality to it is that something that you look for a- anything that comes under the parama picture name should be there should be a voice behind each of those pictures in the sense it is it should connect to uh, to me it, uh, so for me uh, cinema is not just a uh, product right it's yeah. not it's not, uh, it, it as much as it has a commercial angle it should have an artistic value uh, to it as well uh, and you know i treat cinema as a, 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 it can be a good documentary for the future generation as well uh, like when we look back and like 20 30 years down the line and when we look back and we want to know, the, the next generation wants to know how bangalore was during uh, you know in 2020s they should have a proper reference if you we keep doing only films with you know uh long ago much then you know people will get confused probably in 90s in, in 90s there people only you know, you know roaming around with nobody <laughs> ate, nobody ate at least nobody uh, went to the park and they were talking each other yeah nobody loved each other it's just yeah. that you know they were <laughs> killing yeah. each other nobody just like gazed at the sea yeah <laughs> yeah i i truly truly i'm in love with cinema and uh, i mean and that is not just a statement i mean yeah yeah uh, so uh, i want to I truly want to produce these kind of films. I really want to be a part of this this films in in some or the other way. Right. I enjoy being a part of it. Right. But what was the root of it? Like you you finish Kavalagari, you're looking okay what I'm going to do this next. What was the the spark of an idea that made you want to develop this into a No, so the the hit and run accident that happens in the film was was something that I was a witness to. Oh, okay. the hit and run that I that that I had seen and I had written the story then. Okay. And every film that I write is deeply personal. Right. Like, but this was extra personal, extra intimate for me because it was my first full fledged script that I wrote. To in two thousand two thousand two thousand ten, I mean right. almost right ten twelve years back. So. every after every film after godivarna uh, when i couldn't make this when i made godivarna after godivarna i wanted to do, i wanted mm. to make sapta uh, after kavludari my first thought was like i want to do sapta so there was always this thing that was that it felt like and i have always believed it and i have told him also that there's only x number of stories in me like i know i'll probably make only Eight, eight or nine films in my entire Why life. Why is everybody saying it these days? <laughs> Lokesh said the same thing. I, I, I don't, I don't. As in, I'm not saying it like you know. I'm going to make only eight films or nine films. I know that. But can't you be inspired by other things you possibly, don't know yet? Right? Possibly. I mean, like, I'm not. I'm not just like this hit and run inspired ex- you now. Exactly. I'm yeah. not. I'm not. As in, what I'm saying is, right now I have eight, nine stories that I am waiting to tell. Right. The thing that I've noticed though is in the in the time that I've made these three right. films, I have. no new ideas have added to those eight ideas that i initially had oh wow okay which is that's what you mean a sizable amount of time that i have spent but somehow the new stories are you know it feels like i have to go looking for them right you know so my initial plan is to make those eight mm-hmm. eight or nine scripts that i have which i really want to make because i i feel a connection to those stories right. like i feel a voice inside my head that says okay you make this you know you want to make this so the the idea was to always make sapta yeah. like i was desperate to make sapta and i was it's like it just it, i think it was sort of destined that i get to do it with him uh, and i i feel it is reached its maximum potential because of a producer like him right. like because of his mad passion and love for cinema 
he allows me to do what i want so it is like a perfect perfect marriage that way right so it's basically that hidden run that made you extrapolate that yeah, into yeah. like what if what if and the characters and right. then you start sort of traveling with the characters like right. and you start living with those moments like that scene for example in the prison uh, i still remember there were two three moments where the moment i wrote those scenes i was like i i as a filmmaker i want to exist after having shot these scenes right one right. was the the climax scene between the juxtaposition between the marriage and the fight yeah uh, that was one thing that i was like okay this i have to shoot somehow right and the other was the conversation between uh, the prison inmate where he is talking about how she how your girl is special yeah yeah, you know, yeah. What, my what wife the thing that she does yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. so like how even leaving a place like this is is you know is 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 not easy for her yeah so and that, and, and I sorry to interrupt but I really like the way that what could have been a very very sentimental thing was brought out so matter of factly that yeah, yeah. that the audience feels sentimental but the characters are not sentimental you know that the emotion is given to us and that can be said about a lot of the film that's what I was talking about earlier that that respect and it's not like you know because you're not raising the background score you're not like making her cry you're not making him cry nothing it's like they're just doing the things that they're doing but we are feeling the emotion yeah. but i i've always felt that the uh, when i watched a lot of when i was in love in in college or in school or when i uh let's talk about that him <laughs> i think i think that will be the rest of the interview let's talk about all these things <laughs> so uh, whenever i went to watch a film i didn't feel like the film was capturing what i was feeling yeah like of being in love it was some, somehow very glorified and i was yeah. like i don't feel like this ever you know but that's what i'm saying the high moments it's what i was telling earlier right correct. it's like every film feels the need to the cute things correct, kind correct. of are so yeah. th- then as then as i discovered cinema from different parts of the world there were some the some films which were you know which were showing what i was feeling like you know i saw a few french films which made me oh, which made me feel like okay you know there are filmmakers who are showing this then i saw a lot of films from all around the world like tamil films kannada films or, and there were films that was just showing that feeling and i was like okay it is being done before so i want to make a film that that tries and captures it captures that feeling of being in love yeah yeah uh, you know so that's how the uh, treatment of the film sort of got cemented uh, into this, in, yeah. into this. Can, can you name like one or two films that like i want all of you to name one or two films that you think are the best love stories you've seen any uh, like uh, mani sir's <laughs> filmography, uh, filmography <laughs> is you know like what i really like about mani sir's film and what i really have learned from his films is that there is a certain voyeuristic element that he not in a negative way yeah. but you end up being in that moment with the couple when they are having that moment yeah. and i think that is the most beautiful thing because that moment is special and holy for that couple they are having a moment between the two of them like for example even in a very non romantic film like uh, kamal sir you know watching his kid perform uh, his duties in in uh, in uh, in nayagan where he's imitating yeah yeah the you know the the kids in front of him and he's like what have you what is your problem what yeah. is your problem mm-hmm. what is and the husband and wife see that that's a deeply intimate mm-hmm. moment for a couple yeah which is captured for us to see so i i've always been you know uh, inspired by that so right, right. that's pallavi anu pallavi also yeah uh, which is manisha's first film that was also like a huge uh, influence i just out of curiosity because i was not like really that was his first film and it was in kannada and not really known here until much, he got his success after which it was dubbed what was the reaction to that film at that point is it i don't know uh, i think it was i mean great. have you heard about what i think it was it was a big hit uh, in canada if i remember uh, i don't but i don't know if it was like a like industry record breaking types i don't right, think it right. was but it but, was but was did people say this is too muted or something like that or I, like i'm sure there was one sect of audience who enjoyed it enjoyed it yeah yeah because i i remember my mother like uh, liking uh, same here. that film yeah my yeah. parents also loved that film right right and it it was it was shot in their university like where my parents <laughs> met and fell in love that that was the campus right so it it holds a very special place yeah. in my parents uh, <laughs> oh my god their <laughs> life what about you rupin 
your your idea of a like any movie that comes to mind when you think about love again i'll, I'll sound like a parrot because i'm thinking mostly of manisha's filmography but uh, mauna ragam was one that was okay. really really big for me and just in terms of revathi ma'am's character and you know that there's a really gentle delicate strength about her in that but you know the 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 way that her arc moves in that i i remember being very moved by it but then in general i find a lot of moments like hemant was just saying like that one moment in i can i remember uh one moment in uh, kannatil muttamittal where the children are talking at the table yeah and the parents are just sort of mute spectators to to what the children are going through right. you know the it's camera's a, going round the around. camera's going round and yeah. it's it's beautiful on two levels because these children are grappling with an idea that it's very foreign to them they're like where did you bring this girl from then if she's not our sister you know they're having that conversation and the parents are sort of navigating how how, how are we going to do this exactly you know which is a very strange moment but it's also two adults with their offspring trying right. to figure out oh damn <laughs> you know it's it's beautiful yeah yeah you sir <laughs> uh i mean see when it comes to film i think pallavi and pallavi geeta geetanjali all these films are don't do yeah that. i know uh, uh, this, this is like <laughs> but to be frank uh, see i have i've grown up uh, next to a sister who was a huge fan of shahrukh khan and <laughs> she had shahrukh khan's poster all over uh, on on her door on her cupboard everywhere so i've i thought that you know uh, ddlj or uh, uh, <laughs> you know that is कुछ कुछ होता है दैट इज दैट इज लव एंड आई ऑलवेज लुक फॉर इट नो वेर इज इट आई कैंट फाइंड इट दैट्स फन आई मीन लाइक ही एक्चुअली वांटेड समबडी टू प्रिवेंट यू नो दिस दिस फ्रॉम हैपनिंग सो यू लुक फॉर ड्रामा इन योर लाइफ आई आई डिड एट लीस्ट इन द कॉलेज व्हेन आई वाज इन कॉलेज आई आई रिमेंबर दैट यू नो इफ आई कम अक्रॉस अ हार्ट फेलियर सॉन्ग आई यूज्ड टू आई यूज्ड टू जस्ट Uh, i had a walkman and you know i used to listen to that song and enjoy that oh, now i'm you know okay i had a love I've, i'm heartbroken let me enjoy the song that that's i i i used to i used to actually love it i was a huge uh you know that song guy <laughs> not yeah. just that song i just, i loved music uh, in general but in my playlist when you know when the sad songs played i i loved them i loved uh, you know uh, uh, um, these things guzzles and uh, you know <laughs> when he compares uh, uh, you know the girl to the moon or yeah. that, I, i just loved it so he is the actual romantic actually he is he is the anti you no uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but, but i i lost it when i didn't find it uh, around <laughs> i'm like no this is not happening where <laughs> anyway but he didn't find even the normal stuff that he want where are you going to find this this is like but uh, himat how much of uh girish kasavarli your mentor is present in your sensibility i mean obviously there is that transference of but he also worked in a very different sphere right because he chose to restrict himself to body quality in the independent art film that scene whereas you're working in a very mainstream space so how much of what he what you learned from him are you able to bring over to this space no i what i learned from sir uh, girish sir was basically the aesthetics of filmmaking right like how important it is to know the craft like his his command on uh, the while working on set with him i the because he was working in very limited budgets i realized that if you know the craft really well if you know what cinematography is if you know what editing is if you know every facet of the technical uh, you know how cinema gets made then you control everything because of which you can make the films that you want yeah. so that yeah. is one of the biggest learnings that i got from him so i realized that i need to know uh, cinematography well enough for me to say okay in, in this much light i can do this scene right i i might not know where to keep the exact light but it's very important for me to know that if i have two lights i can do a particular scene a particular way okay like you know that kind of a thing i started i i learned from him and, and also in terms of the artistic value of film like how you can move somebody deeply and infinitely without actually having to spend too much money you just need really good people in front of the camera yeah. like you know that that is something those those are the main things that i learned but while working with him i realized very quickly and i have had couple of conversations with sir also 
about why he doesn't want people to watch his films. I, from the very beginning, from the very onset, I was like, I want as many people to watch my films. Yeah, yeah. So, which is what, you know, I, which is why I gravitated towards making popular cinema. Right. Like, for people. Right. What, what was the general uh, feedback amidst the Kannada audience and the critics for Side A? Oh, the, the general feedback is beautiful. Right. Yeah. Uh, like, people, uh, see, Godi Panna Sarana Mai Kutu, sorry. Uh, it's a very new uh, kind of a film uh, for Kannada audience. So, you know, I I always say this that, you know, uh, sometimes when you, if you are used to have pizza burger and if I give you uh, ragi roti, uh, you know, all of a sudden, probably you, you might uh, take some time to, you know, get the taste of it. Right, right. And then probably once you get the taste, then you'll yeah. you'd want to have it again and again. I, I think it's the same with the, uh, you know, Sapta Sagar I mean, there is a set of audience which we have built in the last 10 years who pro you know probably who came to the theatres right then and in they, they fell in love with it but there is another set of audience who probably in the first watch uh, you know they they didn't connect to it as much as they watched it in the second uh, they watched it the, the second time in, in Amazon and they loved it uh, so I, I come across the, that kind of audience also yeah. so for me it is more of you know building uh, audience for these kind of uh, films yeah. and Rukmini what Again, without spoilers, what can we expect from the journey of Manu and Priya in, in <laughs> side B? Or maybe describe it in terms of emotional color. Like, are we, are we there for in intensity? Definitely. But apart from that? Yeah, def definitely. Like, in intensity on steroids. Um, but I think the thing that is going to be really gratifying for people to watch, certainly it was for us to explore, is the the growth that these characters have had in that interim in those 10 years from 2010 to when we meet them in 2022 or 2023 the how they've grown how they've changed and where they go from this point forward right the things that have happened in their lives that i know i know as an artist that part was extremely gratifying to explore but i think that uh to watch also, it, it I think it's going to be a little bit like reconnecting with old friends right. and seeing where they go from there. Hemant, I asked you one uh, one of the things that when we were WhatsApping about something else, one of the things that you mentioned was that you were a little uh, apprehensive about uh, side B simply because you said uh, everybody is going to bring with them some kind of preconceived notion, notion yeah. about these two characters because they've all connected to them on a personal level. So that was one thing that, that was, can you explain that that part? When the film was going to be two parts, I realized that after side A, especially at the point that we leave the audience with, there is a certain curiosity in terms of what happens right. in side B. So when you ask a question, the audience is obviously going to answer, <laughs> answer that question and then come to the theatre. So everybody is already writing a story in their head with regard to where this journey could go. So, of course, with the trailer coming out and with the publicity material coming out, that uh, at least the, uh, it will it'll, it'll narrow down. It will sort of, because initially after the side A, lot of people after the uh, lot of reactions I saw were like, oh, side B is going to be one revenge drama. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> it's not full revenge drama, just hold on. So, that kind of anxiety in terms of them writing their version of the story and then coming and finding something else, it is a different experience. So, right. Usually, see what happens is in a film. This is this is my reading of the audience, and this is how I analyze myself as an audience member. Every audience member goes to the film to like the film. Yeah. He walks in because he's paid money. Yeah. And he's investing time, so he doesn't want. Nobody pays money to have a bad experience. Right. They enter with hope, right? So they are entering with the thing of okay, uh, this is a film that I want to experience. We, as filmmakers, as a film team, have to hold that hope with a lot of love and care and make sure that, you know, it is not taken for granted. Right. So, uh, side B is, is, is going to be slightly different because they are coming with a certain expectation. They are coming with a certain incompleteness of the previous story. So, that is new for me. So, that is what I am very anxious, curious. Uh, you know, excited about all at once. Right. It's like 100 butterflies in my stomach. You know, I'm also trying to think, has there been 
her love story in the history of cinema that has been in two parts. Two parts, I don't think. Three so. parts. Huh? The before sunrise, before sunrise. No, no, but no, that's, no, not, was, that's not. Uh, that's yeah. not like a sequel. Yeah, as in it was. I mean, it is a sequel. Aren't they the same characters though? But you can They're pick the up the second people. one without really knowing really, the first really one. Knowing the first one. It's not a continuum. It's not a continuum of a story. Yeah. It's oh, okay. independent. Yeah. No, I know what you're saying. It it plays better when you see the three together. Mm. But but even let's say you pick the last one, mm. you can always imagine a how they met. Yeah. Just right. like I'm you, doing uh, for yeah, Manabra, and then see the last mm. one as just this couple mm. that's bickering or whatever it is. So I don't think that that's has been. I wanted to talk about the sound of the ticking clock when oh. when <laughs> they the prison scene happens. You know, because using that to create a sense of anxiety, breathlessness. You know, putting in that kind of as opposed to just playing background music that says mm. what their emotion is and sells it to us tell me about that kind of decision so uh, so when i'm writing there are some places where i get lost uh, and you have to go looking for the answer hey. uh, in terms of, i'm talking about treatment hey. so uh, that scene actually came about because i had to go visit the parapragnara central jail in bangalore and the journey took me in 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 a car took me 2 hours to get to that place and i finished i uh, i i finished the the viewing i mean the the whole meeting of the jail executives and they took me to a to a tour and then i came back home and i was writing the scene and suddenly it hit me i was like this character priya if she were to go to prison she won't do it in 2 hours she has to take a bus probably then i went and checked if she let's say she lives in you know uh, maleshwaram and she has to go to parapnagar how many buses she needs to take so i found out it was almost three buses so that immediately made and uh, made sense immediately it just clicked in my head because i'm like this girl has to spend half a day to go meet somebody for two minutes yeah. so immediately i was like this has to somehow find a way into the treatment of the film right. like how do i quantify time mm -hmm. and make bring that aspect of time into which is why we show her journey we introduce the clock she looks at the watch so i decided this entire thing has to play from a sound perspective right uh, you know we are going to accelerate the time and reduce the time uh, make it fast and make it slow and that is how the design happened and i shot it while shooting it when i every time i looked at date it i was like something is missing something is missing which was basically the sound design right. and once rajakrishna sir sat on it and did his magic it took all these ideas of the clock and uh, you know uh, and sort of started playing around with it i was like aha this <laughs> this will look nice now you know so that's that's how that was the thinking behind what behind what was it. her audition scene her audition scene was uh, her calling him from the beach uh, uh, uh telling saying, him not to bother talking i'll talk yeah Just that was the <laughs> that was the audition scene right why did you pick that scene it's it doesn't seem like a particularly uh like you know what i mean right it doesn't no i wanted that what what were you looking to explore i wanted scene? to see how uh, there is a certain intimacy that that the, the when people in love speak on the phone it's like some other person mm. right the <laughs> voice changes like there is a certain there is a certain shift in personality so i wanted that uh, i wanted to sort of witness that so that was the reason why i, I picked that scene. that the scene there's also one very interesting choice that you made which is that for a couple that's been in love for so long you don't ha get into a sexual zone at all uh any particular reason for that or did you just say let's just keep it like in a very at a very emotional rather than a physical level no the, we we very very uh, at the beginning of the film itself we sort of convey to the audience that they are a couple that have been physical right, right. Uh, that we they, that's the comfort level there is a comfort level yeah. physical intimacy is also something that is not a is not an issue for them right. they've been in a relationship for so long that you know uh, there is no discomfort or you know uh, lack of you know uh, uh, a sense of understanding of personal space so that is something that we, we didn't want to uh, also she talks about you know uh, a trip to madikeri she does yeah yeah, yeah. They stayed there for some few days that is coming inside me oh this <laughs> 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 little <laughs> exclusive oh yeah. that is as in the that aspect of it is something that we have explored inside me 
uh, not the sexuality as such, but there is a certain element of being away from somebody, which is just not a idea of the person as an entity, but also as a physical person. Right. Like a, a person to actually touch, feel, and hold. Right. You know right. that is also something that is is something that we sort of touch on inside me. But we did actually we did explore that in the workshop in the sense of you know. Uh, in our discussions, we did, you know, uh, as we were discussing with Hemant, you know, these were some of the questions that we would have, you know. So, if if there are a couple that have not been physical with each other, there's a certain coyness with yeah, the body, yeah, you know, yeah. that weird kind of electricity. So, that is not there because they have been physical with each other and that therefore informs, for instance, the way that they sit on the bike with each other. That is informed by yeah. the fact that they have been physical. So, once we took all of those calls, it kind of fell into place uh, without having to be like a moment. It's just, it's there. That's the that whole movie intimacy. actually. Nothing yeah. is highlighted as a moment. Yeah. So, I'm really looking forward to side B. I have not seen the trailer because I did not want to know anything uh, because I love the first film so much. So, all I'm going to do is watch it again on Amazon and go and watch side B because I, I, I was like, I was like, I cannot afford to know anything about uh, as it is, it, it's bad enough that I got those bits at the end of side A. So it's like, I just want to... He looked shocked when he said, I have not seen the trailer. He's just like, oh my God, what am I promoting? Just like, you know, so... so yeah. No, oh, but I have come across many comments like that, where people have commented that I'm not going to watch the trailer, I'm going to watch the film. Yeah. yeah. In fact, there was actually, for a long period, I was like, do we, do we even cut a trailer? Like, do we just release the film? That was initially my idea. But then it... it makes better sense to you know have the trailer and treat it a certain way and then yeah no I, I guess there are some people who want to know what they're going in for but because i've already been sold on the first film i'm like i'd rather be surprised with just those little bits at the end than to kind of know what's in because i'm pretty sure there'll be at least a few things that 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 are there in the trailer that's that yeah i don't want to see no it. but also the one one thing that circling back to the reason of the c when you said why c i feel this is the right or pro appropriate moment to bring it up is that the beauty calm element of the c can also be very turbulent right mm. and that is something that that is the reason why the c Right. Makes sense, and and side B is that if if nobody has seen the trailer and they want to watch the film, this is how I would summarize it. And that much I get from the end of yeah, the yeah, the exactly. side A as well. Yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm yeah. happy with yeah. that. But <laughs> thanks everyone, and I, I just wanted to tell you this is my favorite space of movie because I I I know that it's never easy to make any film, but I do know that it's easier to make a like an art film sort of thing because uh, as long as you have the support, simply because you're you're not trying to make too many people watch the movie. You're making it mainly for a festival crowd or, or something like that. But to kind of make something in the mainstream space that that is very unique, that has a voice, uh, that shows things that everybody has has experienced or felt or whatever it is, but in a in a very unique way, I think that's the most difficult thing because mainstream cinema is mainly about repetition and and yeah. cliches and oh this worked that then also that will work in my movie also but to kind of have all those elements and yet break the cliches associated with them i think it's it's very very uh it's a it's a it's a very great thing to do and he can't stop smiling so i'm like uh i'm just gonna like i'm really looking forward to side b and don't you dare disappoint me. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure at all. No pressure. None whatsoever. <laughs> but thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Holidays Nale. GT Holidays Ta. South India's number one travel brand. New way learning through 50. Visit India's first underwater tunnel aquarium at BGP Marine Kingdom, Chennai.